While Montana is known for its large mountains, these peaks and valleys, there is of course a large chunk of the state that doesn't have any of that. However, while it might not be as impressive as the western side of Montana, eastern Montana still has a lot to offer. So before you write it off, I'd like to show you some of the hidden gems of eastern Montana and why it's an underrated part of the U.S. First thing we're gonna look at here is the Little Bighorn Battlefield, which is located pretty close to the I-90, about an hour away from Billings. I don't have a lot to say about the cemetery itself, you know, there's a lot of white gravestones. There's some more elaborate ones around. It's a kind of a nice view, you know? It's a nice little stop. I'd actually never been to Little Bighorn before, despite passing by it on so many road trips. This is kind of the last time I'll see mountains for a few days. I'm gonna check out uh, the sculpture here. It's pretty cool. I would recommend going here if you had a parks pass already. I don't know how much it costs normally because I think it was free for Memorial Day weekend. I don't know if you want to. Maybe stop by. It's got some nice views. There was a couple of purposes for this trip to Eastern Montana, one of which you'll find out about much later as part of a big ongoing project. Another one was just to like check out Eastern Montana in general. Now Badlands National Park is probably the most well-known example of these formations known as Badlands. However, you find them all over the plains here. South Dakota might have the most distinctive ones, but I mean, they're everywhere in Eastern Montana. You find them in North Dakota too, probably Wyoming as well. Also the time we went was really nice. The fact that it's all green and whatnot, I'm gonna level with you. Eastern Montana is usually like brown and dry or white in the winter. You know, it's green. I was surprised that there's like this much forest and hills. You know, it reminds me of the Black Hills, which makes sense as they're geographically very close by. And also, I'm surprised how red the dirt is. Surprisingly nice little drive here through eastern Montana, through the Black Hills light. Passed by the town of Coal Strip, which the first thing you see if you're coming from the south is this giant refinery. <laughs> you haven't seen buildings for like probably half an hour, then all of a sudden, boom, and it's like, oh. Yeah, other than that, not a lot to say. Continue up to the highway, and we eventually go on over to Miles City. Miles City. <laughs> Miles City amuses me in a way that I cannot put into words. We stopped at a gas station on the edge of town and you can see from the pump and the inside that there's an entire section dedicated to cowboy hats. So, yeah. Also, Miles City has one of the Strodes of all time. It's not the worst little town out in the plains. It's also not one of the best. <laughs> Granted, the competition there is limited say the least, but kept heading on east from Miles City, you know, just driving, driving through some more hills, and uh, I did just kind of expect to see a lot of field of just various grasses. I was surprised how much forest there was out here, and uh, the Badlands. I'm gonna take a little detour here to check out the town of Ismay. Now, Ismay is actually the smallest incorporated municipality in all Montana, with a population of 17 as of the 2020 census, which, uh, Whoa. <laughs> on the turn into Ismay, you can see a sign, and on the sign are distance markers to people's houses. So we now know that Jerry Schumacher lives six miles away, and Mildred lives 22 miles away. So we check out the town of Ismay. Now this is a bit more what I was expecting from eastern Montana, you know. Nothing. <laughs> Tiny shells of agricultural towns with a railroad going through them. Pretty flat. They did have a, they had a couple grain silos, um, some houses. They do have a post office, which I think you need to have to be incorporated. And they have the Joe Montan Center. Why do they have the Joe Montan Center? Because in 1993, they briefly renamed himself to Joe Montana as a promotional stunt because haha, get it? Like the football player. That'll bring up our tourism traffic. No, it won't. There's a lot of places that I would describe as the middle of nowhere. Ismay is, it's one of them. Moved on from Ismay. Now I can say I've been to the smallest incorporated place in my state. So, drive on down the road, pass by Plevna, another tiny ass town, and then we reach the town of Baker, which has a surprisingly large fire station. Yeah, I was kind of surprised at how big Baker is. Granted, it's almost 2,000 people, whoa. <laughs> Considering where I've been driving through all day, a little bit of a surprise. We stop by at Lake Baker, which looks like a pretty nice place to be in the summer, you know? I kind of see the appeal of this little town, you know, it's got a lake. That's, okay, I'm not gonna lie, that's about it. <laughs> it has a nice looking lake. Then we head on south to some of the most stereotypical looking plains ever to check out the next thing, which are the Medicine Rocks. This is like a crazy looking place, just like in the middle of all these like plains, there's just these 
crazy rock formations and they're not it's not like too expansive either it's like pretty limited area where you find them yeah they're pretty cool kind of like a badlands feel but also not like exposed badlands i don't know how to describe it it's like badlands but if they got like brought up out of the ground if if that makes any sense because like the badlands kind of are like the ground is wearing away but these look like they got pushed up from under the earth native american tribe they originally called Okalaka, which is where the town south of here, Ekalaka, I'm sure got its name, uh, which means rocks with holes in them. So the more you know. But this is a nice little stop. You know, if you're ever for some reason in this area, check out the medicine rocks. It's a nice way to break up the scenery and then you can see all across the plains. You know what? You know, the plains does get shot a little bit for being pretty flat and boring, but it's some sometimes it's nice to just kind of look out and just see until the edge of the horizon. And here in Eastern Montana, you still have like a little bit of hill, so you know, you can kind of get more of a vantage point. It's not just pure flat, well, at least in this area. Anyways, then we head back up north, past your baker again, stop for some lunch. We get lunch at the local grocery store chain because it was the only place that also wasn't a bar. <laughs> I don't really like eating at bars. Like half of all businesses in Eastern Montana are bars pretty much, I think. Anyways, head on up north, do 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 do, look at some pretty clouds. Wow, isn't that amazing? And go to Weibo. Now Weibo had some construction, so we had to, rather than just being able to go onto the highway the normal way, we went out and took this long detour, except it looks like they just left the detour signs up, so I think we could have just gone straight through. So, yeah, oops. Head back west a bit more to Glendive. Now Glendive has perhaps the coolest thing in all of eastern montana and that is makoshika now makoshika is essentially badlands national park i mean not exactly but it feels very similar in fact like this is this is like one of the coolest places maybe in montana as a whole like it, i think this area can kind of go toe to toe with some stuff you see in western montana maybe it's just the fact that it stands out so much from the surrounding landscape but yeah, this is pretty much like a Badlands Light National Park, you know, except it's not as crowded. Now, unfortunately, there was a sinkhole pretty close to the start of the park um, when we went. So, yeah, we were only kind of able to go on like a couple of trails. We went on this one, but we did get this nice view up here. Also, yeah, and the sinkhole apparently opened like a day before too, so really unlucky. But I mean, look at this view. It's nice to see something that's like not just a traditional mountain, even though I do love a good mountain. But it is nice to see something that is, it's a little bit different, you know? Also, Glendive, they got a lot of dinosaur stuff. But they got a lot of dinosaurs just chilling all over town. So if you like dinosaurs, check out Glendive. <laughs> Stay tonight in Glendive, where I unironically saw a phone sex ad on TV. I didn't know these still played. What the fuck? It was also like only 11 p.m. What the hell? <laughs> But the next day, as we were leaving Glendive in the morning, we realized there was pretty much nowhere to eat that was open or didn't have the worst reviews of all time. So we decided to wait a bit until we reached the town of Sydney up to the north. We kept going northeast and passed by the town of Savage, which sounds like a cool name. And then you're like, oh wait, probably got its name for racist reasons. Some more plain scenery. Not the most interesting thing here, but then we get to the town of Sydney, which... Uh, I was surprised to learn has more than 5,000 people. And so yeah, Sydney was a, a nice little town, you know, it's like a small town on the plains, however, it felt alive? It didn't feel like it was dying? Huh. Like, Sydney was actually a nice, pleasant little town. Had a good breakfast here, looked at the county courthouse, and this is actually another reason for this trip, was to cross off some counties in Montana that we had not yet been to and try and uh, finally complete that list this year. And so this is the first time I've been to Richland County. You know what? Stopped at this park here with this old bridge that had streetlights down the middle of the path. Kind of weird, but okay. Then we moved on, kept going north. This is the first time I've ever been through North Dakota. Why were we going through North Dakota on this Eastern Montana trip? Well, because this is actually the quickest way to the next destination <laughs> was to pass through North Dakota. You know, I hadn't been through yet. So you know what? Cross another state off the list. Let's go. This is about what I expected from North Dakota. We saw this ridge over here. It's probably 
more interesting scenery than most of North Dakota. I say having seen this. I've said before, one of my favorite things about passing through rural areas, just random ass things on the side of the road. Like this cone man. Cone man, cone man, cone man. Also a Bigfoot sculpture and sun. Also just a whole free ass house. After driving along this road and seeing a total of one area where it curved, we reached the town of Granora, the only town we stopped at in North Dakota, before heading back into Montana, where you can see the pavement change. So, pavement meta. We stopped at Brush Lake. It's a lake. And I get to knock off a new another Montana county, this time Sheridan. I anyway, stopped here, walked the dog, saw some birds, and kept moving past the town of Reserve. We saw the Antelope Jail. This is another one of those random things you see on the road. I love passing by just little things like this. Pass through Plentywood. It is kind of funny that this chunk of Montana isn't like the least populated place ever. Like there's little towns. Redstone, you can see this R. Yep, <laughs> that's an R. Pass into the last county I needed in the northeastern corner. That being Daniels County. Check out Flaxville. Not a lot to say here. We see a sign that Scobie was eight in 18 miles, and we saw his water tower, and I was wondering if that water tower was in the town of Scobie, and we could just see it from here, and that's how flat it is. It wasn't. Then uh, we passed through Scobie. Not a lot to say here. It's Scobie is a funny place name. That's all I gotta say about that, really. Head and then we head on south. Do 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 do. And we reach the town of Wolf Point where we have a lunch, dinner, question mark? I really don't have anything to say about Wolf Point. There's, <laughs> we passed through, got gas, walked the dog. A drunk guy called my dad the doctor. That was kind of funny. Just a town on the plains. Anyways, drive on past. Also, I had seen like five pheasants, could not get them on video. They were so quick, those little buggers. Anyways, then we drive on south, you know, pass through some more. Plains landscape. You know what? It's nice to get a change of scenery, even if the change of scenery isn't the most interesting, you know, because I'm used to seeing mountains all the time. You know, it's kind of nice to just see flat void into nothing. And hey, you see this train here? Now, we'd seen quite a few tracks where they'd just been like parking cars, and they're they're pretty long, so I decided to see how long this one was. And you can see it start here. Uh, you can see some more here as it stretches on into the uh, into nothing. And finally, here is the end. If you had to guess how many miles long you think it was, do that. I don't, I didn't think of a good segue there. That's right, it was 18 miles of train cars. So then we reached the town of Circle. Another one of those, this is the middle of nowhere places. For the full Google car experience, I'm going to turn on my camera while we're in the town of Circle and then turn it off as soon as we leave. Ha, just kidding. We're actually gonna go further than the Google car did. We're gonna go down to the Macon County Museum and look at these janky dinosaur statues. Look at these little guys. Little goobers. You know, let me introduce you to Mal. We got Charles, Samantha, her son, Gurgis, Jeremy Rennerap, Annika, Nozzle, Krungo, He Who Must Be Silenced, Old Hamboy, and of course, Sarah. It's kind of fucked that they use child soldiers, you know? Looked at some old rusty equipment. Like a lot of museums in tiny rural towns, it's mostly a collection of junk with some cool stuff in there. And we head on back south, uh, southeast towards Glendive. Now I haven't mentioned it yet, but we passed by a lot of rivers. So I couldn't think of a segue. So I'm just gonna show you all the rivers we passed over because they were really full. <laughs> because there've been a lot of snow melt and rain recently. So look at these full rivers. Neat. We passed by this little art piece that has all the classics of the prey, like, you know, a bison. We got a lot of dinosaur fossils out here. There are babies. And rhino. We leave the interstate at Forsyth, which claims to have a hundred businesses in the trees. How true is that? You know what? I'm looking at it. They might have a hundred businesses within the trees there. It seems like they're large enough. I right, head north. This is what I thought we were getting into with Eastern Montana. This is what I picture is like just grass and some hill. Yeah. We did not see pretty much any sign of like a real town for like two hours maybe because we stopped here 
Just like, have a snack. We came along this route to, to knock out two more counties. The first of which being Muscleshell County, county seat of which is Roundup. It's an alright little town. It was almost like a little oasis here, in the middle of nowhere. Saw this weird Dutch windmill thingy. Got another lunch in a grocery store because everything else was closed this time. Where our father called his child's thighs sexy? Oh. No. Then we moved on from Roundup. And then we pass into one of the last counties I hadn't yet been to. That is, and that is, of course, Golden Valley County, where we passed by the town of Rygate. And that's about all we did. <laughs> we just kind of drove through that one. Now I visited 55 out of Montana's 56 counties. I have one left to go, and you'll see what that is later. Stay tuned for that. But now, the journey was pretty much over. I just kind of sat back. You know, it was kind of nice to see a part of the state I don't think about too often. I do love this state. There's a lot of problems with it, but it's amazing. Even the eastern part. And it feels good to see mountains again. Oh, how did I ever live in Calgary? And obviously, I didn't cover everything in eastern Montana. I didn't even mention, like, all the wetlands and birds. Like, do you like birds? You know, even though I might not enjoy eastern Montana as much as the west, it's a cool part of the world, and maybe I made you think about Eastern Montana a little bit more positively. I know I do a bit more after this trip. And it's important to remember that wherever you go, there's always something worth seeing if you're just willing to look. Thanks for watching. Give the video a like, subscribe, check out some other Goshen Man videos. I've done a lot of Montana, and there's more Montana on the way, so get hyped for that. The reason for this trip was actually part of a larger prod. I can't wait for y'all to see. So hopefully you stay tuned for that. Check out the other Ocean Man social medias in the description, and I'll see you for the next time I go somewhere. This has been Goshen Man, the hidden gems of Eastern Montana. Newt Gingrich. No, I can't call on these little guys Newt Gingrich.